Hey guys, this is Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. I am here with the Behringer X32 today, and this is video 104. If you haven't checked out my previous videos, make sure you start with the overview of the console or start with 101 as they do go in order. So let's go ahead and dive in. This video is going to be on the input options as far as gain, polarity, phantom power, all of those options that we have available to us on our Behringer wing. So let's go ahead and see. We can see here that I have my channel one, which is my wing inputs one and two. So if I go and select here on my channel input, and if I'm in a different spot of the console and I want to get back to the home page, all I do is press select and then home and I am here. So now we can tap into the input selection portion of this channel. So we can see I have channel one and two wing. This is local one and two. And if I want to assign phantom power to this, I can press and hold on the screen and that will assign phantom power. Now, if you have really close eyes, you'll also notice that the little mute button appeared. Now the wing automatically mutes the source when you apply phantom power. And if you've ever had in-ears in when someone has turned on phantom power, it hurts because there's a big spike and it goes through the entire system and you don't want that to happen anywhere in your venue or church. So the wing has automatically applied a software function to when you turn on and off that, it will automatically mute that for a short period of time. Additionally, I can adjust my gain by using this rotary knob. And then if we look over to the next knob, I have a trim. So not only can I set the gain of this input, but I can also adjust the trim on that input for this channel. Now say I have a stereo channel and one of the XLR pins is broken on that XLR cable. So I have two XLRs, one for left, one for right, but maybe the right channel has one of the cables just tweaked a little bit so that not all the connections are correct. Well, if you've ever done this with a keyboard, you'll notice that one side is going to be 3 dB quieter than the other. And so we can actually use this balance knob to adjust anything that we have in a discrepancy between a stereo channel. Or if you have a stereo guitar and there's one amplifier that's a little bit louder than the other amplifier on the stereo setup, we can use this to adjust up to 9 dB of adjustment between the two channels for balance. We can additionally invert the polarity of this channel by pressing invert. We also have some filter options up here where we can do a low cut and a high cut directly from this. Now there's also this cool function called tilt EQ. And if we turn that on, I can show you that real quick. So we can go here and when I go to my tilt EQ, I can adjust the tilt of this EQ curve. Now there's also a couple other options as far as this goes as well. There's a maximizer, which is like a sonic maximizer. And we can see that when we go back to our input section, we see maxer on and off. And we also have the ability of doing an all pass filter of 90 or 180 degrees. And there's going to be other videos explaining the details of that. The very last thing that we have on this page is our distance. So we can actually apply a lot of delay to this input. So we can uh, apply up to 23.32 milliseconds or eight meters, which is 26 feet of delay to this individual channel. So if you do have some instruments that maybe have far away mics, you can actually apply delay to the close mics to match the time arrival of all of those microphones together using this. Now, there's not only local input sources on this console, we can also control AES-50 devices as well. And so on my channel 2, I have my DL-32 sitting here. So I have a DL-32 sitting up on stage, and I can apply phantom power to this, and I can adjust the gain, and I even have my trim adjustments just like normal or my balance. Now, I can also hook this Behringer wing into a Behringer X32. And a lot of you churches are thinking, hey, I have an X32, maybe I should do a wing. And I think that's a great idea. And using that X32, you can actually control the preamps directly from this console. And I'm going to show you how right now. 
On my channel three, I have my Behringer X32 coming in on my AES50B connection. And we can see that these are grayed out. And I cannot actually adjust this because on my Behringer X32, I don't have remote head amp gain turned on. So if you go back to your X32, under the AES50A portion of your routing, there's a little checkbox that says remote head amp gain or remote HA. And if you click that, that allows any remote devices to externally control the gain of your X32 inputs, which is very handy. On this currently, these are grayed out, so I would only have the ability to trim up and down. And if you are setting up this as maybe a broadcast console for your church or venue, and have the X32 sitting in front of house as your main control of all of your inputs, you can still do trim adjustment to get all the levels set the way that you want them on your Behringer wing, which is very helpful. Thank you for watching this video. The next video that you're going to be seeing is talking about the ALT input or the alt input source option on the channels, and it's a very cool feature. So check that out.